in this session, uh, we will talk a little bit about uh, the integration of the FTP Plus into other software package, packages, and also in how you can uh, drive the FTP Plus if you want to integrate it into your software package. Uh, for example, how you can drive the FTP Plus via ASC, or how you can uh, how you can uh, put it in your Fortran or C code, where you can link them together. And um, actually, the FTP Plus is already integrated in many different tools. I just here uh, put up a selection. Uh, you will also, in the hands on session later, uh, have examples for that. Who, has, uh, who, can you, uh, who you can drive the FTP Plus in with IPy, for example, or how you can use Phonopy and combine it with the FTP Plus in order to calculate uh, vibrational properties. Or you can use ASE, for example, to pass structures to the FTP Plus, calculate them, and then read them out and manipulate them and evaluate them. Uh, the FTP Plus is also, uh, um, there is a ver um, work in progress to connect the FTP Plus to LAMS. Actually, there were already successful attempts, and now we are uh, hoping to come up very soon with an official version, official repository, where you can also drive the FTP Plus via LAMS. Uh, the FTP Plus is also part of, for example, of Material Studio, which is now the company you now is called Biovia, but I didn't find a nice logo with Biovia Material Studio, just the old one. So it's also part of the Material Studio suite, or, or for example, the Morse CM program, uh, where you have also a graphical user interface, uh, also it, it can throw to the FTP Plus, or Newton X is also there. And also there are some other software packages as well. Now, why would you do that? And I think there are uh, different motivations why it could be useful for you to use the FTP Plus uh, as a part of a, a bigger package. And uh, for example, uh, the co connection to LAMPS is working uh, on because LAMPS has a lot of capabilities in terms of monochroid dynamics, which the FTP Plus doesn't have. And of course, the option is we could code up all those things with a, a, a huge amount of work but the people uh, who are developing LAMS did that already, and LAMS is a very, very strong MD engine. So basically, we can profit from that in a very nice way if we just create an interface between LAMS and the FTP Plus, and then basically whatever is uh, there in LAMS as an MD driver, you can use it in a connection with the FTP Plus. Or, for example, you can also use uh, the FTP Plus. It's, uh, I didn't even put it there. Uh, it has been also connected to Gromax and Charm, so basically, you can make QMMM simulations, right? So you can have molecular mechanics codes, which are providing for a, a, a very big number of atoms uh, methods to calculate that very, very efficiently using a molecular mechanics method. And then you put maybe there are a few regions where it's very important to get the uh, various quantities using quantum mechanics. And for those regions, you can use the FTP plus. And then you can couple the two things together. So that would be the typical scenario but you would want to do that. Or if you're thinking about ASC, I guess uh, most of you know the atomic simulation environment. It is a very, very nice way to write in Python small algorithms, which can run different codes and evaluate the results. And you can manipulate those results. So for example, if you just want to uh, uh, build up a database, or if you want to uh, do nudge elastic band calculation, which we will do to, uh, today in the hands-on session, then you can use the capabilities which are already there in uh, other. So uh, despite the fact that they are not coded up and natural is band in the FTP plus itself yet, you can do it easily by driving it via other. Now, let's assume we want to communicate with the FTP plus. Then there are three different ways where you can do that, which are just here, the three uh, different communication channels. So we have the Phi IO, the socket IO, and the API. And now I would like just to uh, tell to each of them uh, about each of them a few words. Maybe the easiest way to communicate with DFTP Plus is just using uh, communicating with files. And this is basically the equivalent of that where you are running DFTP Plus so far, right? So you are preparing the input files, then you are running DFTP Plus, and then you are uh, having a look at the output files as we did in the hands-on session uh, in, this, uh, in this school so far. Uh, and this is exactly what would be the workflow you, uh, uh, what a workflow would uh, look like if you do that uh, with a driver program. So the driver program, as a first step, would have to create a full DFTB plus input. So exactly the same way you would write the input, you create uh, such a uh, such a file. You can do that, for example, with uh, the atomic simulation environment, the ASA, 
we will uh, uh, also do that in the hands-on session later. Then when you created the input file and you put in all the information which you want to tell the FTP plus, you would just tell from this driver program, you would just start the FTP plus as a sub process. And basically the driver program would start the FTP plus and wait until the FTP plus finishes. And when the process of the FTP plus finishes, then of course the FTP plus brought uh, all the output files which is produced. And then basically what you would do is you would just collect those uh, uh, output files uh, and uh, read out all the interesting results you are interested in. And if you are talking now about something like a geometry driver or a Nigel Elastic Band driver, then you would just go for the next geometry. You would create the next geometry you want to pass to the FTP plus. You would again write a new input file, uh, start the FTP plus again, and so on and so on. And you would do it uh, always for all the geometries you are interested in. Uh, this method has several advantages. The first of all, it's super simple. It's basically exactly the way run using, using the FTP plus exactly the way you use. So it's very, very intuitive uh, how, to, how, to, how to do things. And of course, the nice thing of this is that whatever the FTP plus can understand, you can put in the input and whatever the FTP plus can produce as a result, you can read out from the output, right? So basically you have the full functionality of the code uh, provided you have ways to write uh, them into the input file or reading them out from the out file, output file. Uh, of course, you are completely independent of the DFTB plus code itself. So basically, you can write your driver in any uh, language you like. If it's Python, it's fine. If it's any other language, it's no problem because the only, only requirement is that the language you use can create files and can read files because that's how you are communicating. And uh, even parallelization is super straightforward, right? So there, there could be uh, two different kinds of parallelization you could think about. First of all, it could be that the driver program is launching many different DFTB plus uh, processes at the same time, right? So you could say, okay, I have notched elastic band uh, uh, calculation. That means I have to calculate several images, but I can them they are independent from each other. So I could calculate them at the same time. So you could basically create uh, those numbers of directories. In each directory, you could just create a DFTB plus input and then you could basically run the FTP plus uh, in each folder separately at the same time. So that's uh, also one uh, possibility of parallelization. The other possibility of, par possibility of parallelization would be that you have a big system which the FTP plus should calculate. So your driver is maybe a shallow one, a small one, but it starts the FTP plus using MPI. And then basically, uh, if the DFTB plus calculation is the one which takes the most time, then the FTP plus, as you have already learned, can uh, run uh, in an MPI mode, and then you would just make a parallel run. And then when it's finished, then the files are there and you can collect it. Then. And finally, the uh, other big advantage is that it's very easy to debug because you exactly see what goes in and you exactly see what goes out, right? So basically, if something doesn't work, you just go to the folder where the input files and the output files are, and you can just visit what, go, uh, what went wrong during the calculation, why something didn't work. Of course, if it's very simple, then usually there's uh, something fishy with that. So it must have some disadvantages, -ish. and indeed it has a few. Uh, first of all, the biggest problem is exactly that you always make the full cycle. So basically you have to uh, initialize TFTB plus for every geometry. Um, is it a problem? Not necessarily, it depends. If you are calculating a big system with several thousand atoms, then the initialization times are absolutely negligible. But if you have very, very small systems, but you, are, you want to calculate several millions of them, then it could be that the initialization times are getting significant, right? Because the, when you start everything, the FTP plus has uh, read the input file, parse it, allocate all the arrays it's need, reading the parameterization times, uh, the files and so on and so on. So at the end, it adds up. Also, it requires a lot of file IO, right? It's not necessarily a problem, but as you have seen, for example, on the cluster here, the file I.O. is a little bit problematic. So if you want to, if you have to uh, open and close files very, very often in a very, very high amount, it could slow down the calculation. But nevertheless, this is the simplest way of doing things. Okay. So how would that work, for example, if you want to do something in uh, Python? We are going to release uh, very, very soon a tool, a tool set which contains basically readers for the most important files which we are extra, uh, which we have writing on. 
And here, but what I'm, I'm showing you is basically how it uh, would look like then. So let's assume uh, we want to make just a DFTV plus calculation. And uh, we want to write uh, uh, just a driver. Uh, or we want to, oh, sorry, we want to, uh, Okay, no, sorry, I'm, I'm just missing out. So two, two things. So first of all, uh, what I wanted to tell you exactly, which I, which I started with. So we are, we are uh, releasing a, a package which can um, read the files in Python. So that means, for example, if there's a file called results.tag, which we usually, usually create, uh, if, if we are putting the FTP plus into software suite, uh, then uh, you can just initialize an, an object results tag with the name of the file. And this object will contain all the information in a, in a Python form. So basically a native Python form, which you can read out of that, right? So for example, if you wanted to get the energy, the total energy from this file, you would just, uh, you would just once you initialize this object, object with the result with the uh, stock tag file DFTB uh, plus road, uh, you can basically just uh, access it as an attribute. Right, so basically that's that's our first part uh, uh, which we provide you in order to help you to interact with the FTP plus via files that we will provide ways to read those files. Actually, there will be an even an other abstraction level uh, which will be even higher. We will just uh, provide something like an ASC calculator, but independent of ASC where you just say, okay, here are the results in that directory. I don't know which files they are. I'm, 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 I'm not interested in that, but please check whether you can find the total energy there. And then basically it would know where DFTB plus usually stores the total energy and would give you, uh, would give you that value. So basically uh, our goal is that you don't even have to know which kind of files DFTB plus creates, but you only have to know, okay, I want to have uh, this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of property. And this is a little bit, uh, not a little bit, not a little bit, but quite similar to that, what ASC does. And then uh, on top of that, we will also have an ESC calculator. Uh, so that you can also use it uh, from ASC easily. The other part is the input generation, and this is this is the the, the second thing which is uh, which is shown here. And basically, what we have here is that uh, you know the HSD input already quite well, right? You have worked with that in the in the days uh, before quite a lot. And now we have a Python library which is already available. Actually, you can also even install it via PyPy. It's uh, called uh, HSD uh, in Python, and it can read. Uh, or input format. And if you read this input format, you can create it to a Python dictionary, right? So basically whatever is in the H HSD format can be one-to-one -one mapped to the Python dictionary. Why is that useful? Because then you can take this Python dictionary and you can manipulate it. You can even think about to, uh, to build up this Python dictionary from scratch yourself. And then when you are finished with this Python dictionary, you can write it again as an HSD. So basically there's a one-to-one -one mapping between HSD and Python dictionaries and then Python dictionaries to HSD. And that gives you a super, super simple way uh, to build up the FTP plus info. We will see that the current uh, calculator in ASC uses a, uh, uses a different strategy, but that's not that general. And uh, there are some constructs in the FTP plus input which you, not ca which you cannot generate with that kind of input generation. With that kind of input generation, you really can whatever the FTP plus can read you can generate. And that's, uh, that's also something which we are going to release. I mean, this is already released and this will also be part of the, the bigger suite I'm, I was talking about. Now let's leave the files. So now the point is how can we spare this, this reinitialization every time? And one possibility strategy is that you are using so-called socket communication. And this is particularly, you have to think about that way. There are two processes, both are running, and they are exchanging data uh, with each other, whether the, those are uh, INET sockets or file sockets, that's, uh, that's uh, unimportant. The main thing is that basically they is uh, exchanging data without writing files. And uh, this is something which is possible with the FTP plus. Currently the so-called IPI protocol is installed. So it's a protocol which describes how two programs can exchange data via sockets. And you will have in a hands-on session later also uh, an exercise where you were driving the FTP plus via IPI via sockets. And I will also show you an ASE example because also ASE can uh, 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 do socket communication via the IPI protocol. I will show you how you can do that. So how does it work? Uh, it works in a way that you are creating again a DFTB plus input file, but this input file uh, contains all the options you want to do. 
and the so-called dummy geometry, which means um, the FTB plans, when you start it, you have to know uh, which kind of elements there will be in the system. The coordinates doesn't matter. So it, it doesn't really matter what are the coordinates, but the FTB plus has to know how many atoms you have in the system and of which species they are. And that you provide in this, uh, in this dummy, ge uh, dummy geometry. And then you start the FTB plus asynchronously, which means you start the FTB plus and you start to driver. And uh, basically those two things, the FTB plus and your driver are running at the same time in parallel on your computer. And then they start to chat to each other. And this is exactly what is then depicted here. So basically with a certain protocol, which is defined by the iPad protocol, you would send the geometry via the sockets to the FTB plus, and then the FTB plus will uh, give your driver a response. And then basically you can evaluate that in your driver and then think about, okay, do I have to send a new geometry or not? If yes, you are sending a new geometry and you are receiving a, a new answer and so on and so on. And you do that as long as the driver doesn't tell the FTB plus, okay, I don't have any more geometries for you to process. You can finish and then the FTB plus would stop. And then you can also stop your driver. And this is a very nice thing to do. Um, the nice, the, one of the big advantages, which I already told you, is that basically you don't have to initialize several times. You do it once, the FTB plus reads all the SK files, it allocates all the arrays which is need, and basically you are just seeing new geometry and the FTB plus can immediately, without having to do any initialization, calculate the energy for that geometry. Um, also, there is no file IO. Of course, at the beginning, one file IO when the FTB plus reads the input and reads the state cost of file, but during the entire loop, basically, you, if you switch off all the output files of the FTB plus, then there is no IO at all. Right, so there's no file IO. Uh, again, the driver you can implement in any language, pro provided you are able to uh, talk to sockets in this language, right? So if you are doing C, C, whatever, basically, even Fortran can do that uh, with some extensions, uh, which, which I was in the FTB, for example. So basically, there are no uh, language limits and uh, no language barriers. And again, the parallelization, exactly as I showed you before, it's always passive, it's possible. So basically, again, you could have a process which are launching several, uh, so you could launch several DFTB plus instances, and then your process could via socket to talk to each of them uh, together. Or alternatively, you could have only one DFTB plus uh, instance, but it could be MPI parallelized and run, running over multiple processors uh, if it's needed, right? So the parallelization is more or less uh, uh, easy. And, uh, However, it also comes with some disadvantages. And uh, the first of all is that the, the setting up is not complicated, but not that straightforward anymore. You have to make sure that the both processes are running at the same time. So it's a slight complication. And uh, of course, they should somehow agree on the protocol, right? So if, if the driver sends a certain uh, command, which means it's, uh, it sends a certain, uh, certain bytes, certain sequence of bytes, then DFTB plus must understand it and know what it means. So basically they have to agree on the protocol. And that means that it should be a protocol which both of them speak and uh, the IPI protocol is one which is uh, quite widespread, not the only one, but uh, this is currently the, uh, the only one which is implemented in uh, DFTB plus. So it must, you must make sure that your driver speaks that protocol. If not, you will have to debug it. And there is the part where I say good luck. So debugging a socket communication is not easy at all because you don't know what goes forth and back. So you have to start to, 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 to try to debug by writing out what you were sending and on the other, on, in, in other code, trying to write out uh, what, what it received and hope that they are the same and they are basically, they are understanding each other. So basically the debugging is not necessarily trivial, but once it had been debugged and it works, then it, it's a nice approach. And uh, of course, because uh, they have to know to each other uh, what, the, what protocol they uh, speak, uh, basically the quantities you can query or the quantities you can put in. So the input and output quantities, they are determined by the protocol. And currently the IPI protocol is very, very limited. So basically the type of information you can pass in both ways, it's, it's quite limited. We are thinking about a more general protocol, maybe at some point it will be uh, we will have time to implement it, but currently what you can get out is, uh, is rather limited. And there is one thing I, I wrote here, no callback possible. Uh, just remind, uh, just uh, put it as a note. I will tell you at the next slide what I mean by that. 
Okay. What would that work? If you see an example for that later in the hands on, but just to sketch the idea. So basically you have on the DFTB plus side, you have a normal DFTB plus input, which I, I didn't, uh, didn't show because you know it already by heart, but basically the driver section, you have to change. In the driver section, you would say, okay, uh, the geometry will change via socket. So basically that tells the FTB plus, okay, I don't have to change the geometry my, my, myself. I just have to listen on a certain socket and uh, listen to commands. And then uh, they uh, basically via the socket, somebody will tell me what I have to do. And that's the only thing which you have uh, to change on the FTB plus side. And then you start the FTB plus and then the FTB plus has started and it's no waiting that uh, on, the, on, on the socket which you, which you select that it gets some commands. And if you want to talk to the FTB plus, you have to start your driver. And here I was just writing this in, in Python, but it could be in any language. But today we will do the exercise in Python. So basically what you do is just you are, you are launching a socket, a server socket by some command and you are binding it to the socket. And then here also, you are setting up uh, with all the, all the parameters how, how it has to be in Python. And then basically here, and this is the interesting part, you are uh, making a loop over all the geometries, all the steps you would like to do. And then here you see that the first thing is we are sending to the FTB plus a certain string in the IPy protocol, it's called post data. And uh, it means I will send you know the geometry and the, uh, the position of the atoms and the lattice vectors. And then we are sending via the socket, uh, via the socket, the lattice vectors. Uh, we are also to send the inverse of the lattice vectors, and so on and so on. The number of coordinates, so how many atoms there are, and then you are sending the coordinates. And then, uh, for example, here the next one, you are then sending from the driver to the FTP plus. I have sent uh, you know all the coordinates. Give me the forces. This is what usually IPy or one of the things IPy would like to know. And then you are saying get force, and then uh, and then then the FTP plus knows. Okay, now is the time when I have to answer, and then the FTP plus will basically uh, send uh, one by one according to protocol protocol all the quantities which are needed. First, for example, as you see, it will send the energy and the number of atoms, right? So that would be the here. So basically, on the driver side, you are just not listening, receiving the information from the socket. And you see that the FTB plus as first would send the energy and the atoms and so on and so on and so on. And that you do it basically for all the geometries you wish to calculate. So it's not complicated as long as you are not messing up here uh, the, the, the order of the, of the various commands and you know exactly what comes when. And it's very important that two, uh, the two programs are running in parallel, of course, usually the socket driver is very shallow, so it doesn't really require much uh, resources. So if the system is big, you can run the FTB plus on all the cores with so many processes as you have cores. Okay, and then uh, we are coming to the last one, to the third uh, type of communication, which can be done between the FTB plus and the outside world. And this is via API, so the application programmer interface. So basically the FTB plus is a library. And uh, actually, this works uh, so that you are you are linking your application against the library of the FTP plus or uh, the FTP plus. And uh, of course, that's very, very nice because you have to do the initialization, on, initialization only once, right? So basically, you are telling the, from the FTP plus via a function call, okay, please initialize the calculation. It's also very, very nice because there is no file IO involved, right? So basically, you are really passing data in the memory. So it's super, super fast. And of course, it's uh, very simple in, in, in uh, compared here, compared to the socket where you have to make sure the two processes are running at the same time and they are uh, talking the same protocol. And if not, you will find it uh, out when you are already running the code. Here, it is much easier. Uh, you have to make function calls. And especially if, if your driver is in a language like Fortran or C or C++, which have a static, uh, a static type, you would get already an error at compilation time uh, if you are not uh, invoking the function course with the right argument, right? So it's a little bit more robust. And once you compile the, your driver, it's linked against the DFTB plus library. So basically you just have to start your program and it's automatically has access to DFTB plus. So there's no complicated setup involved, either creating a directory where we put the input output files or 
by making sure that uh, we are having two parallel uh, running processes which are communicate via socket. So how does it work actually? Basically, uh, there are two ways how you can uh, um, initialize DFTB plus from a library, either by saying it here's an input file, please read it and initialize you, uh, yourself from this input file. Or if you are uh, having a driver in Fortran, you can even build up the input yourself in the program. So you can say, okay, let's assume you, are the, uh, you, are, uh, you have these atoms, uh, you have these coordinates, you have this Hamiltonian and so on and so on. And basically you can build up step-by-step step, uh, the input uh, in, a, in a programmatic way. Once you have the, uh, done that, you are telling the FTB plus to initialize itself, you initialize a calculator. And then basically uh, from this calculator, you can uh, set up some properties. Typically, again, you would send the geometry, but it can be also an external potential, for example. So if you say, okay, no, I'm putting it, uh, you into an electric field or a field uh, generated by some external charges, which is a very typical if you want to couple QM, MM methods with each other, that they are coupled via the Coulomb charges, the field of the Coulomb, uh, Coulomb charges on certain atoms. You can set up also the external potential and so on and so on. And for all of that, we have function calls. And then you are doing these function calls and then you say, okay, I have fed it, uh, you know, with information, now give me the energy. And then the FTB plus in the background would calculate the energy and give you the energy or you can query the forces or, or whatever. And then again, you can start this loop again and again, as long as you want to do it. And every time when you start this loop, the FTP plus would make an SEC calculation if you, if you require an SEC calculation. So basically converging the charges and then giving you the output uh, property which you, which you want to have. There is uh, one bottleneck here though. There are some programs which would like to, which would like to provide an external potential which, however, depends on the charges. Now you have to think about that. What does the FTB do during the SEC cycle? It changes the charges until they converge. Okay, but it's a problem because the external driver would like to provide an, uh, an external potential, which depends on the actual charges. So whenever the FTB plus changes the charges, this potential has to be newly generated. Unfortunately, this is something you can do with a so-called callback function. Uh, if, if time uh, permits, we will have a, a, a quick example for that in Python. So basically, when you set up the FTB plus, you can tell the FTB plus, whenever you change the charge, please call this subroutine, this function. And this function will be, of course, your function, the function, the driver. And then whenever the FTB plus changes the charges, it would, call, it would call this function and say, look, I have changed the charges. Can you update your potential? Tell me what is your updated potential. And then you can write the function in your driver, which basically when it gets called, it gets the charges from the FTB plus, and then it has to provide a potential and maybe the gradient of a potential so that the FTB plus can take into account. And that works by a callback, so-called callback function, which means to register a function, which the FTB plus will call at a certain point of the calculation. And this was the note which I had in a previous slide. This is something, for example, which is absolutely not possible if you are driving the FTB plus uh, via socket communication. So there is no way to register callbacks, uh, callbacks. So that's a little bit less flexible here. It's absolutely possible. So this seems to be, of course, the, the best approach then, but it still comes with some disadvantages or something which should be noted. First of all, you have to need, you have to link the FTB plus. So basically that means that uh, you have to have an application uh, if, it's, uh, if your application is written in C or, C or Fortran or C++, you have to take care about the DFTB plus linkage at uh, building times. If it's in uh, Python, we will see it's a little bit easier, but still you must make sure that Python finds the li uh, right library, okay? Uh, your driver, there, there are not, uh, not, not, not much, uh, not many criteria which your driver has to fulfill, but it has to be able to handle C tile function calls or Fortran. So we have basically two interfaces, a C interface and a Fortran interface. If you are using Fortran, then you should use the Fortran interface because it's using modern Fortran. If you are using Python or C or C++, then you can resort back to the C type interfaces. If you want to parallelize, then uh, it's still possible. You can still pass an MPI communicator through the interface of the FTP plus but uh, it needs a little bit more care. So basically you have to aware about uh, more things as, uh, as in the previous approaches where you just say, okay, I'm just doing MPI run for the DFTB plus part and that's it. 
Um, again, the debug debugging, of course, it's not that trivial, right? You don't have the input output files. So basically, when you debug, then uh, you have you have to debug your own code. Um, but uh, if you ask me, it's still easier to debug than to, to then than to debug the socket communication. And of course, also here is uh, is that way that of course uh, the number of input properties and output properties which you can set and read out is limited by the API by the uh, by the various functions which we are which we are providing. So basically, every output property at the moment uh, requires the, that you call a different function. And of course, you can query only the output uh, properties for which we are uh, providing functions. Uh, we are thinking about a much more general protocol uh, where you can query many things much easier, but uh, that's, uh, that's still work in progress. So that, that's, uh, that's not in the current version yet. But still, you can already get a lot of uh, useful information out of the FTB plus via this interface. And so how would that look like? Just to give you an example before we finish. So basically, if you would call the FTB plus on Fortran, then you would just uh, uh, call an initializer for a calculator, a calculator with a DFTB plus uh, calculator type. And then basically, for example, if you want to build the input uh, from a file, then you would just say, okay, give me the input from a file and build an input with that. This input has also a DFTB plus input uh, type. So it's also a structure or a derived type in, Fortran lang uh, in the Fortran language. And then you are saying, okay, set up the calculator. This is the initialization which you do once. And then you say, okay, set geometry. So you are sending coordinates and maybe lattice vectors. If it's a periodic uh, system, you can set the lattice vectors and then you can start to query things. So you can say, okay, give me the energy or give me the gradients and then the FTP plus. If, it's, if, if it has to, it would recalculate the system and give you those, uh, those quantities. Of course, when you, when, when you call for the, the Mermin energy, so the, the energy, and then for, uh, to the gradients, the FTP plus would not make any new calculations because it would know that the geometry didn't change. So it can just reuse the results, which is already had. So basically you won't have to wait anything between the two calls. In C, it would do, look exactly the same. So there is not, uh, not much difference. It would just basically have an initialization or something which builds up the input, then something which sets the coordinate and the lattice vectors, and then something which is querying the energies and the gradients. So basically it's very, very similar. Basically, they are just very shallow wrappers around the Fortran functions. And you could do also using the C interface, you could do also from Python. Actually, we are also providing a, a module with the FTB Plus, which uh, uses the Python, or which enables you the Python integration. And then uh, here, you are just uh, uh, here setting up, basically, you are telling the FTB where the, where the, DFTB, uh, the, the DFTB Plus object, where the DFTB uh, library is. And then this, you will see it also hands-on. Later, you are just setting the geometry and then you can query, for example, the number of atoms as you wish. And then again, you can say get energy or get gradients or get cross charges, whatever, whatever you are uh, interested in or for which we have uh, API codes. And when you finish that, you can just close the calculator and then basically the calculator will free all the areas which it was allocating. And with that, basically the processes have been finished. Okay, and that was basically roughly a sketch over how the FTP Plus can be used in various environments. And now we will have the hands on when we go over all those cases and have a look how we can really do that ourselves. Thank you. <laughs>